shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Huh. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing with that walk Man, on. what's going on with you, man? How, how's life? It's it's amazing. Life is amazing. Mm-hmm. Bills getting paid. Bills getting paid. That's all that matter, man. Check it, man. We got a special guest in the house today. This guy right here, man, he come all the way here, man, to be on Boss Talk for New no Chicago. Yeah. This guy here from Chicago, man, but the bar originally from New York, man. Mm-hmm. Check it, man. Anomaly is in the building. What's going on, man? Yo, yo, yo. It's Young Anomaly, BG the label. Young the Anomaly, man. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Man, I heard a lot about you. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. I've been hearing actually. I was like, man, this this young cat right here, man, come from somewhere a lot of cats don't make it out of. Hey, man, um, just uh, you from New York originally? Yeah, the Bronx. The Bronx. Yeah. The boogie down Bronx. Yeah. So that's why it was easy for him to move to Chicago because they're really pretty much the same. Yeah. 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 Which piece of the best? Huh? Chicago or New York? Oh, New York. For sure. no, hey, man, no, check no, it, man. No, My no, boy's no. in the building. You Young Anomaly is in the building. Is, you know, Chicago be doing that. Um, the deep, deep dish. dish. That don't I matter. Love, yeah. I love deep dish, but yeah. New York nah. be doing them ultra thin. Oh, I'm with that. I'm big, with that. Huge. Nah. We be both places. I'm with that. <laughs> I like deep. I, got, I, need, I need all that meat and sauce and all of that. It'd it be too much sometimes. Yeah, I'm all the way. And slices, all that cheese. I'm all the way with New York with them little thin pieces, baby. Yeah. I'm all the way with it, man. Check it. So, Bronx, man. Coming up in the Bronx, where were you from? I heard you from the projects, from the bricks. Yeah, I'm from Bronx River Projects, um, near 174th, OCA Chicken Ave. How hard was it? Um, How hard was it growing up in the, in, in the projects? What's worse, the Bronx or Queens? Oh, the, um, I, I mean, growing yeah, up in yeah. New York City, you, you be in your borough. That's right. So, I don't know about my borough, so I can say oh, that's okay. worse. <laughs> oh, so, so, just tell us a little bit about coming up, mom, dad involved in your life? Yeah, so, I mean, a little backstory. Um, I was adopted at five months, so, um, you know, I know both my families and stuff like that, but, you know, I was raised um, in Bronx River Projects. Were um, you adopted by a stranger or for, by another family member? Cause, you know, nah, you can, strangers. By strangers? Yeah. Okay. How, how, how empty was that? Uh, at five, though, can you remember like that? Nah, I don't remember. You don't so, remember? Yeah, I don't remember. You blocked it out? Yeah. So your um, adopted parents are like your parents? Yeah, from five and, months, yeah. Okay, and they're gr- great parents, of course. Yeah. Okay, sure. awesome, awesome, awesome. So, when you um when you think about uh, just the uh, whole situation for as uh, the way New York is structured for a child to come up impoverished like that, coming from the projects, because I lived in the projects, but what, what was it was it hard living or was it was it I mean was it easy? How was it? it Let's was, talk about it. It was hard living. Um, I could tell you I'm numb to certain things, so that racial profiling, my project had its own police department that policed us. Um, Couldn't walk on my building in peace. Um, When Stop and Frisk was running rampant in New York, um, it gave them some extra power. It it had a grievance against us, you know? So as you know, I was a football player. So even when I was in school attired, they thought I was a gang member. I had detectives that were um, four four undercover detectives, narcotics detectives. They'll run up on the, um, they'll take their car, put it up on sidewalk, jump out, say, yo, he just come from buying weed, I, I, jump out on me, and then ask, ask me questions, shake me up, and then jump in the car and drive down the block. <laughs> so that's what I, I grew up around, stuff like that. And that was um, pretty often? It was often. I never told my mom, and I don't tell nobody it because I need her to worry, but yeah, I'm, I'm numb to certain things. Was the police department is the police department um blacks, whites or mainly whites? Um they tried to um do community policing, um, you know, um integrate, you know, the black officers in the neighborhood, right. but it was they was, you know, the narcotics detectives, they was white. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everything, you know, they tried, but it's it's kinda hard in them situations, you know. But yeah. And if the police, you think that that's just for their community, you think that they would know each and every one of y'all kids, you know what I mean? I know, oh, he a good kid, he a bad kid, he, you know, and not really just be messing with y'all like yeah. that. I mean, they, they did know, you know, they had, you know, the, the intelligence, but um, they still, they was used to shoot blindly into the dark. And hopefully they kept, that's what stopping first did. It let you shoot blindly into the dark with no intel, just going off a probable um reasonable suspicion at that point not even probable cause Mm -hmm. did you have brothers and sisters yeah i got um 11 
So it was like 11. Wow. Like, okay, this biological or this um, is no, adopted? So, I know he said he adopted from five, but he said you know both your family, yeah, so that so, means he should know your siblings. Yeah, so it's, oh, my birth is six of us, uh, and then my adopted family is five, so all of my family. So I don't separate none of them. Ooh. Well, so you did know your birth parents. Yeah, that's yeah what I, I mean. found yeah. them by exactly. accident. How? In school, I was in school one day, and one of the um, one of the students, like, they heard the last name, and it was like, yo, is that so your brother? Is it an uncommon last name or something? Yeah, um, Baird, um, Green. So, it's like, Green, Baird, that combination. Um, oh, okay. If you know Got that you. combination, you know my family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, tell me about that story when they heard that name and then asked you, because you uh, apparently wouldn't know. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I don't know if I'm related to them, you know, whatever. How did that all play out? All right, so I'm like the youngest. I'm the youngest boy, mm-hmm. um, and like all the, out of eleven, I'm like the youngest, like you know, youngest boy. Mm-hmm. And then I got a little sister, but um, my older siblings, they was in the, in the foster not yeah not the foster care agency because we was adopted, but they was in the agency, so they they was had the visitation right with the birth family, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. um, they knew each other. I didn't like I was the last one to go through the the process of being adopted, so I would have never knew if nobody never told me. Did you ever get, um, did you ever approach your parents and be like, hey, why did you give me up? And, you know, my other siblings, you didn't do that with them? Um, no, they, they, they got adopted all. Oh, they all? Okay. Yeah, my so, adopted family took us all. Oh, uh, really? Um, yeah. Including your biological brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah. She took a, um, That's so yeah, she, she, dope. She, she, we every known in Bronx for her projects as, um, Miss Tina, so they respect us. She adopts a her. lot of kids. She adopted us, and then just she raised. Y'all. She raised her kids, raised the grandkids. Okay. So she, she wanted y'all to stay together. Yeah, that's that's our main mentality. And then my sister father took her back, but you know I was a. Did was, you ever ask your mom? Yeah. Why did she give all y'all up then in a, that case? If you listen to one of my songs, I forgive you now. Mm-hmm. It, she was a um drug addict, HIV, all of that. Um, so. She she carried me the term and gave me to the best circumstances possible. So always grateful for that. But you know, wow. she's still alive right now. Nah, she died. She died. Yeah. How long ago? I was a freshman in college, 2012. Mm. How, so did, how how did you feel about it? I was um it hit me hard. Um, I mean I didn't know them, but I wanted to find out. You know, yeah. my um you know I hated for too long. So right when I was getting comfortable to start asking questions, I get the call. I was in the mall, so I dropped to my knees. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I was dropped out of college. That shit hit hard. Yeah. Yeah. And your dad, is he still? Oh, my my dad was a, um, I was a one-night stand baby, so you know how that go. Right. I heard he off the earth, my birth dad, so all them gone. Wow, that's mm. crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, coming up, being in, be, being coming from those odds and being where you at and who you are today, man, it's totally amazing. Yeah. You know, to, to, to come from where you come from, um, projects, um, you know, mom uh, pretty much giving you away and, Dealing with all the things that you 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 know overcame, man. God has got a gift in you, yeah. and that that gift is pretty much to help others who've been through those type situations. They are out there, yeah. And those sure. kids and those people, those it's, it's some five and seven year olds right now, and eight year olds and ten year olds. That if you speak, it's in volumes to them because you can really relate to something that they they that they're going through. Exactly. And so yeah. that's where I would suggest you know that you put. Your, your, your time in is helping those kids because yeah. God didn't let you go through that for no reason. But you know what I get from it too? I get the fact that we all wait so many times. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to ask these questions. I'm going to wait till I get older. I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to wait. T- tomorrow's never promised. Don't wait. Just do it right then and there because number one, you would have already had, you know, a lot of things already answered. But then I love the fact that you forgive, that you because they're gone, you have to let it go. You can't keep that in. You have to let it go. So I love that fact. And then you also have your siblings still with you, so you have a part of them with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I like the way how the, all of that worked out, worked out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the thing I, I definitely uh, um, want to get into the music. You know, you um, want, you, 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 love the, you love the music? Yeah. Or is it something you just trying out? No. When did you get serious about it? Yeah, like I, I did the schooling thing for my, uh, you know, please my mom. But then you know I got a, I got a, I just graduated my master's degree. Um, I did. I, awesome. I was in my Congratulations. field and everything. I, thank you, thank you. Wow, master's so, degree. Yeah, at the top of my class, three point nine four GPA. Awesome. Wow, man. Yeah, so I, I I had to do that to you know. So I'd be like, yo, 
you could do the education and do the music. Mm -hmm. So I was doing both at the same time, finishing up um, back and forth in and out of classes in a Syracuse, New York for shows. And Were you working too? Oh yeah. Um, I was, I had insurance, I was, I had insurance brokerage. So, you know, anytime somebody pitched an opportunity to me, I, I look into it and I try it before I knock it. So I was one of the youngest insurance brokerage owners in the state of New York. Wow. So I had my own company. So I was, I was doing my thing, you know? So I like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm very ambitious. Like just give me opportunity and I go. Any kids? No kids. Oh, so you had the time to do I had all the of time, that. time, opportunity, yeah. all the funds to Girlfriends? me. Girlfriends? You know? No. Yeah, so How crazy you that is! Time. How crazy is that to come from where he come from? I know. That, that's you, that's what I was interested in. So do you think much. that made him drive even more? Um, he's right here. We can ask him. You know, um, that is that where you got your wife from to make sure that you you overcame all those obstacles and yeah. not only overcame them, but I mean, totally leaped them in a way to where you can encourage others that you can make it. Yeah, definitely. It was it was hard, like doing things like. Having to glue your shoes together, yeah, and all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, having one pair of boots through the summer and the winter. That's like that made me numb and made me humble. So like, um, I grew up without you know like them expensive game systems and stuff like that. I had a remote control car, so it's it's them situations that made me numb, made me appreciate the little things, so I could live off the little things as an adult too. But you grew up. But the thing that I love about all of that, um, you grew up experiencing all of this with your adopted family. Yeah. And a lot of people out here don't adopt because of like, man, I can hardly even afford to take care of my own kids, much less adopt. But she still went out and adopted all of these kids, plus took care of hers, although it wasn't such a great environment. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you um when, when you got into the music, I'm going to go into the music. Go ahead. You know, um, what made you get into that? Um, it was like 4 a.m. one day. Um, I was How old? I was, I was, I was, 2019, I wrote my first song. Mm. Um, so, I think I was <laughs> 20. He 20, calculating. 20 something. Oh, okay. Forgot, yeah. I don't be keeping track of my age sometimes. I forgot. Okay. But you too like young for summer. that. Yeah, it was in the summer. Um, 2019, I was up 4 a.m. And I'm, uh, you know. I might be in my, my head a lot. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking like what's my next move? What's my safety net plan? So um I threw on a YouTube beat and I was like, shit, something on my mind. So I went ahead and I I, I wrote my first song that night and it felt good, you know. Mm -hmm. It felt good. And then from there on I said, Huh, let me see how I sound record recorded. Cause I've always been a creative individual, so in regards to playing instruments, growing up and stuff like that, um, that's all I, you know, that's that's what I was around growing up in the projects. They have we have a community center that you know help develop your skills, whether it's football, everything. Um, so I was always playing instruments. So, but I went to school and I played football and wrestled my whole teenage college career. So I didn't look into music until school was done, football was done. I already. Went into my field with criminal justice. I did insurance things. So I said, what's going to make me happy? I really wasn't happy. So, but when I, after my first song, recorded it, um, you know, it felt good. And then I just started studying music, studying, um, building a label, um, studying all the people in the industry about building a team. So I, I followed suit. My mentors, you know, they, they, they kept their hand on me, making sure I was good, um, making sure I knew you know, the ins and out. I mean, I already had the business aspect because of, you know, having insurance brokers. So I know I set up LLC, mm -hmm. my lawyers, you know, all of that business aspect. Now it's just take all of that and form it to the music industry. So it was easy transitioning into the industry um, and transitioning um, into uh, into the label side. So, so you are a signed artist yeah, on I'm a signed, label? Yeah, I'm Who signed are you signed to? to? Um, BG, the label. So that's, um, that's, my, my, that's my label. Um, but I don't really tell people it's my label. I just tell them I'm signed to it because I got my whole team, my execs, my e-board. So they want me to focus on being an artist, CEO. You know, even though I'm CEO, they want to focus on being an artist. I told them I'm going to put it 100% into the artist, so y'all need to hold down the admin side. So I just tell them I'm signed to BG, the label, I'm an artist. <laughs> Do wow. you have any other artists signed to that label? Um, I, I have interest, but um, because of the fact that we still f figuring out how to developing, you know, pushing artists. And I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I'm the experiment and experiment's going very well. So 
when we at that point where we develop the path, then you know, bing, 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 we could offer more spots to other yeah, people. But right, right now, I don't want to experience nobody career but mine. But I know earlier you were talking about that when you were growing up, you had a lot of anger built up because of um, not knowing your past and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I mean, like it was, it was not anger. It was just, you know, I just, you know, at, at some at some point, I didn't care. Um, okay. Because I didn't know I was adopted. Um, I was raised as you know, birth like that. Because you turned out what, really good, from yeah. what I'm hearing, all the things that I'm hearing. But during the time of all that poverty, did you end up in any gangs or in any, you know, bad situations, bad the streets, situations, the, um, all being of that? Profile. I was looking at ten years. Um, they just say, oh, he fit the description. So I was, you know, I oh, was so you 15, faced ten years. And I was facing it. So facing I was looking it. at it. They were like, just plead, plead, plead. Um, my brother, he was in, my older brother, he was in criminal justice. So he was like, yo, don't take the plea. Because, you know, in New York City, public defenders, man, they just want to close the case. They just want to move on that's, to the that's next. Not, that's not just in New York City. You know, City, that's everywhere. That's everywhere. Lie, but, yeah, yeah, so they would try to get me to plea, plea, plea. And I'm like, yes, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Like, how y'all going to say I, I was here when I was there? You know, so it's like, oh, he black, he fit the description. He's big and black. Oh, he fit the description even more. So they try to railroad me. But my brother, he had criminal, he already had it. He, you know, criminal justice, he was in his senior year, so he already knew the lingo, the, um, Is the language. Is he a lawyer now? Huh? Is he a lawyer now? Did he nah, finish? Nah, he, um, he has a, he's just, um, he in the social work field. So yeah, oh, um, awesome. he had criminal justice and social work. So okay. when I got into that situation, you know, he was, yeah, he, 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 he was a stern big brother. So <laughs> when you asked about the gangs, um, as you know, grew up in the projects, you know you got the outside surrounding beef. Right. So I went to a high school, you know, with a boogie. On, you know, we was all from the same high school. So if you know, if you hear anything about Clinton, do it, Clinton High School, it was where all the hoods meet, and some of the hoods have real beef outside. So, um, you know, I was walking into situations um, where... I was hoping, you know, because of my football status, you know, mm -hmm. that kept me safe. You mm -hmm. know, my hood, my hood affiliation, it was secondary to who I was as a football player. I was a New York City All Star. They supported in the newspaper. you as being a football yeah, player. Yeah, so they kept me out the, um, you know, mm -hmm. the, the hood they, beef and the gang beef right. and stuff like that. Um, but I still needed to be protected by my hood because right across the street they shoot at us. So my hood still protected me. They say, yo, go to school. I mean, some of them really wanted me to be the muscle, but the older Gs, the OGs and stuff that was there when I was in Pop Warner playing football, they made sure I was right. They was like, I'm going to tell Miss Tino and you go home right now. You know, <laughs> or they about to shoot up the block, go home right now, you know, because I was, I'm not going to lie, I'm one of the only football stars out the hood. You know, you know, basketball was everybody. You're saying you're a football but star. Did you do good? I broke my shoulder. I was, oh, okay. I was going D1. I dove for a fumble. And I slipped on the turf, landed parallel, so it snapped. So my whole shoulder was disconnected. So And that messed up your career. Ended it. But I didn't, you know, give up on the school. You know, some people do the sports and say only sports, only reason I'm going to school. I had to, you know, I had to okay. buckle down even more. Yeah. Did you so, and A Boogie ever talk after? Um, not really. He was younger than me. Okay. Um, but you know, we all ran in the same circle. But at that point, you know, um, it was like, why are you not reaching out to a boogie, you know, try to be hybrids the label? I'm like, number one, I'm from Bronx or Projects. Um, that hybrid is really a hood. Like, <laughs> it's a hood. So me trying to go to hybrids, you knowing where I'm from, you know, even though, really? you know, even though it's music, but I'm still from Bronx River Projects. So that, it, <laughs> a boogie will tell you what that side of town is. Like, they It's hold, that bad. Oh, my God. Yankee Stadium right there. They don't want to get caught over there. Yeah. They so, caught me over there. So who else? They pulled that knife. I'm like, y'all turn the knife back into them. I was I had a cop car, they ain't even come over there. They try to, yeah, so it's, it's wow. over there. So I'm not, you know, so I build my own shit. So that's a note. If you go to New York, don't go to that area Yeah, don't at go all. to Yankee Stadium and think you're a tourist home. Yeah, that's God. what I, because I would they think that Yankee Stadium. <laughs> it's, it's I would one think side that that's the place to go. The other side is the mm -hmm. concourse. They take everything you got. You look like a tourist, they make you feel <laughs> like, you, like you're not even from there. Wow, so Brooklyn, man. Where Brooklyn at? You, uh... Jay Z, one of your main uh, influences. I'm not gonna lie. No. Let's be real. <laughs> nah. Let's be real. Because hey, I've been, Boogie and Rod we've been, Wave we've been. Rod Wave, Rod yeah. Wave was just here last night. Uh, yeah, that's the day. Some, yeah, somebody from yeah. Chicago told me, "Are you going to run into Rod Wave?" I'm like, I didn't yeah. know he was coming. Yeah, 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 but but so Rod Wave was. What 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 made you like Rod Wave? Because I, I was melodic. So if you hear my first my first song, I prayed that song. 
that was my first song. So when I put it out, I tested the waters. That song got picked up by Pandora, and Pandora gave my own radio station. So I always felt comfort in the melodic um, crossover. So melodic and rap, you know, um, influence A Boogie, Raw Wave, um, 50 Cent. So that type of, you know, be melodic on the hook, rap in the verse. Um, I personally don't like to have the same tone throughout the whole song, so I like to have it bounce off each other. So um, that's you know who I follow in regards to it's trying to stray away from auto tune ish squeaky robot sound to trying to pull it from deep in. So right away pulls it from deep in. Let me ask you this: um, So going back, I'm, I'm gonna hit on Jay again. Just had a show where Jay Z uh, was brought up on my show, and um, I asked uh, the question: uh, Should the Jay Z's and the Oprah's and the Tyler Perry's, well, Jay Z for your instance, being from Brooklyn, do you see where he come back and help the community? I mean, I'm I personally am not from Brooklyn, so I don't. He don't come to the Bronx. I'm have from, you, I mean, have you ever seen him come back and do or anything? Because you're or in heard? New York, period. You so from you New York? Hear that. So, I mean, I I have you I, ever heard I him? Don't really hear about him, but everybody else I hear about. You but know, not Jay Z. What nah. celebrity? What? major celebrity have you heard of that come back to their community um, and help for sure fat joe um fat joe he French. from the bronx yeah fat joe is who like i'm from bronx for a project so my ogs you know from the hood they connected with him and funk flex and all of them so okay um, they know them personally but that's I and they come back and help yeah fat joe like they come um, so you said I, fat joe help he came to well, my community uh, center uh oh, uh, and and you've seen this and you've heard this. And I was there. <laughs> oh, you was there. I was there. I was okay, a, but I was when you say help, though, how do? No, they I mean, help? like you got, um, um, you do they come back and do things far as like helping the 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 communities that they're from by just trying to put in businesses or how do they help? How were they helping that day when you? Right. Um, I think it was just you know giving the um the project kids the opportunity to experience a celebrity. Oh, that so, just that. You just come and do that. a speaking, right? Yeah, that's so all they really that did. That right there is like a big breakthrough, you know. But you never like, seen Jay Z do that? I'm, I don't know. I mean, I left at 17 for college, okay. so. Um, but I'm that's still on, a long time that a, you were there, 17 years. Yeah, I'm only from time. the Bronx, so my mom kept me out of Brooklyn. Yeah. So okay. like, if you're from the boroughs, area. you stay in your borough because the boroughs got beef. Like, New York City is ten different, five different cities. So <coughs> New York City is the whole city, but each borough is its own city. So, so you just didn't deal with. It. But you said, well, when when did you say Fifty came or no? Not, nah, I didn't know. You just know, you just know Fat, Fat Joe. Joe and and Fat Joe really in the hood, like Fat Joe. He came to my projects because he know the, he know my he from Bronx River. So, um, you know the Bronx started hip hop and stuff like that. So, um. I know some of the like my football coach was a part of Supersonic. Okay. Is, um, they the core like them mm -hmm. way back mm -hmm. when. So you know Ice T and them. Yeah. So I know those people like those influences. And I stuff keep like throwing Jay Z under the bus because he he basically the is New York to me. When I think of New, New York, York mm -hmm. he he's the he's the pretty much the pinnacle of New York when you think about rap music. Yeah. Uh, for the one era. I ain't gonna say the whole era because the first one, like you said, uh, when it first came out, it was more about Kooji rap and all those guys and uh, D Nice's and you know uh, what's that boy from Boogie Down Production? You don't know the nigga from Boogie? You you supposed to know that you from New York? <laughs> Which one? Boogie I mean, Down I just, Production. I just got into music, so I, really I you like weren't it. even paying paying no attention to it. Nah, I really, was just, it was just school football, wrestling, and you know R and B. So. so who inspired you? Because then did your mom or your dad or anybody around you, were they doing music? And nah. you'd be like, man, I, th that looks dope. Nah, it was just, you got to get education. So it was the creative side wasn't pushed. It wasn't even mentioned. So what I inspired think, you then to just um, jump out on a limb like this? I was this? done everything. I was had my bachelor's. Um, I was in my field. I did I had a company. So I did everything I was told I was supposed to, you know, so... I seen other my other guys doing music, so I said, huh, if they made it, you know, they just jumped into it. I just jumped into it, you know, I, you know, because I then accomplished, like, at a successful, um, you know, level, everything I was supposed to. So now it's time to, you know, try something new. So it was just something new, but then I fell in love. And what did your mom and dad say about it whenever now, they, you jumped into it? They proud because I did, I did for them, the schooling. 
I did what I made them proud. I made my family name proud. Like my name means something in mm -hmm. Buffalo State. <laughs> so am I like so they were like, okay, you did that and I'll do for you. So what's the inspiration behind your music? Like um the first song that you wrote, what was the thought process behind it? Um, pain. Each each verse was a, a different chapter, like in summation mm -hmm. of a, something I went through. So that's that's what it was, just letting that pain go. And then my whole first project is called Pain the Paper, so just letting it all out. So it's always all about pain, nothing about any of the good times? Because I know you had a lot of good times in your life. Uh, why? That, that, that first why project do, is just pain. It's like a lot of celebrities or a lot of rappers, period, always talk about gun, the violence, sex, I mean, pain. It's never all about any of the good times, because everybody has good times with bad it's not just all bad stuff why yeah, is that so because some of the, 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 um, the bad stuff is traumatizing wow one one bad incident will ruin all them 10 good ones because that's the only thing about like when you when you get in you know racial profile you got a whole good day pass your test and everything but now you just say why don't cops stop me then what i could do different to avoid them so that's all on your mind so the bad just overpowers too mm -hmm. it's traumatizing it's when you just, think about the bronx huh? Um, like I said, uh, that uh, one I was saying, South, South Bronx, that's KRS One. Okay. He from there. MC Shan. These guys originators used to rattle. They battled. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a lot of battle rapping went from the Bronx. That's that's how this thing started. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, and the older heads know that. But then I love the fact that the young boy, like yourself. Don't really even entwine with that. You focus on I rock with Rod Wave or some. It's a totally different ball game, totally different era, and that's why. But but it still got to be a bridge and respect there, as far as in the music. And yeah. I don't think it just happens in in Texas or in in Atlanta or in in in, in Florida. It's everywhere. The young boy is not able to connect back with the KRS ones or the or the or the MC Shans and all these people that so called they 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 paved the way. Now a guy like you, even though you not even in the music, you I mean, wasn't in the music when you first started, uh uh living that life up to seventeen eighteen, yeah. um, the history evidently is not thickened like that. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? 'Cause cause at the end of the day, those guys are from <coughs> your place of you know from where you came up yeah you know but did you even know that um yeah so um, my sister's father was a part of one of those core hip-hop groups so he he that's like that was like my introduction into like the old school you know the um the, the hip-hop um i forgot which one but um it was one of those see what i mean core, them core them core very influential groups um but i was into music so like when the information was told was like oh that's cool but it wasn't oh let me remember and study so like every time i be when i talk to people um i feel like it was the gap between um that generation and ours is the dislike for the evolution of music and wow that's, wow that, that's what it really come down to because like a lot of them they'll tell you yeah we don't like that sound Mm -hmm. We don't like that sound, so sometimes they really just dash you away and leave you. Like, oh, we don't like that sound, so we're not going to even try to instill any values or nothing. we just going to do away with you because we don't like the sound that you're going with and all of that. So that that's what it really come down to. Like, I'm like, they held on to the information, so some of the young heads had to find their way. Right. So um, out of your oh, siblings. Oh, I, sorry. I want to keep Go asking ahead. about the rap. Go ahead. Um, you said uh, Fat Joe, so pun. Big yeah. Pun, he was from there too. Yeah, you know, these, I'm just looking at the way this whole thing, cause Pun them and, and Fat Joe them like a second gen. They're not even the the original. You know, they're they're a, they're their own generation in core. Yeah. So then it comes. I don't even know if it it, it may it it vibes a little bit. Something else happened in you. What I'm saying is, but when you look at the the KRS ones, the MC Shans, the all the ones, the 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 rappers that from there. Um, you know, you start to try to figure out, you know, how can we make this this thing more organized, more structured to keep, you know what I mean? Yeah. To keep that unity so that when, when people look, they got to respect it. See, from the outside looking in, a Fat Joe and all those guys, they, they got to be able to um, uh, extend the right hand of fellowship to the next generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
that's all I, I I be trying to figure out things to, in a way to where it makes sense to keep that historical landmark set yeah. in a way to where people can respect it even on another level. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. It does. It does. I'm just trying to figure it out. And I do the same thing here in Texas. Uh, I do the same thing wherever I'm at. It's all about unity. We all we look like each other. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to aim at it. You say Funk Flex is from over there, too. Um. I where can't, where I can't Funk tell you from? That. I don't know. You say you say he was over there. Yeah, my yeah, my guys, um, my people from my projects, my old heads, you know, my mentors, they know him personally. Okay. So yeah, so they they probably hung out. He probably came to the projects and stuff like that. Yeah, he deeply embedded in the music. I mean, he's deeply in, he's he's a, one of the core guys that you think about when you think about New York hip hop as well. Yeah. Um, and when I think when I look at Funk Flex and and, and, and the time this guy's put in it, he put his life on the line. Basically, just when I say on the line, he he gave it all over to hip hop. You know, yeah. Funk Flex laid his whole, uh, uh, he sacrificed himself in this whole industry. And, and, and so um, to hear that he did come back over or that you know people that know him or affiliate with him to say he come back to the hood is a dope thing, you know. Um, I'm just trying to figure out ways to bridge those gaps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because those guys are, are dope. You know, um, love the way that they do what they do. It doesn't represent us more, say, in the South. Yeah. But they got their own thing, you know, going. Yeah. You know? So so who would you say you looked up to after you got into music that was, you ever figure anything out from New York, like, uh, far as uh, in your, in Bronx that meant, meant anything to you with the music? Um. Not necessarily because no. I started music in Buffalo. So you, Buffalo, so, New York. Yeah. So I was in school. I was still in school. So I was away. But now I'm trying to, you know, like now being on tour, the tour I am, I've been I'm in New York City more than I was in in the past six years. Because you know I ain't gonna lie, when you mm -hmm. when you make it out from where I'm from, um, it's bad enough to the point where you don't want to go back. Young um, anomaly. Do you think that it's important to um uh? research your history on the yeah, music that's that's what i've been that's doing that's something that i that's what I'm, I'm just sitting <laughs> yeah, there trying so to figure think, out why because important. you gotta look this stuff up yeah as an artist you gotta know all of the different you from the bronx yeah so you should know about all the stuff in the bronx you, yeah. you feel me yeah definitely. because if not i mean they, it's just like a person who um you you we got southern artists do the same thing but I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how do we get our people there? They, we got to do a better job bridging these gaps, man. But yeah. to me, it'll help his music as well because then when you just write about your life and what's going on, when you can throw some history in there, in there and educate people because a lot of times people are, have that lack of education, lack of knowledge because not everybody is going to research it like you will, but they'll listen to your music. You see what I mean? So when yeah. you're doing the research and turn it into some music, you're educating your listeners, and that'll also, you know, let them come to you even more. You see what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. You know, I just always be looking at how how we can come up with better ways. You know, um, I, I really don't know. You know, like I said, man, we trying to hold on to this whole legacy, this whole history called music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's watered down. It ain't like it used to be when we first came out. It was a better control on the situation. Now the streaming become a, a thing. It's hard to even you know keep up with who's with who and how is you know these, yeah. these where these people are coming from, bro. We got to do. Uh, we're gonna lose it if we don't figure it out. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If we don't start to do better, we're gonna lose it. People don't. Our our, our division is gonna be our demise. Yeah, you don't believe that? No, I do. I do. That's why <laughs> um when I first started um it was um that's what I was you know I was because I was watching the new new age artists um their interviews um I was studying you know the internet made it more um it made it easier um more access to understanding you know the history. So you got like um. These little, like the drink champs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That when they interview, shout out like, to the drink champs. I, I like that show. I, I watch drink champs. Uh, um, Breakfast Club. They shoot from up there. All those guys and the one you was looking at uh, with uh, one hundred and five. What's her name? Martinez. Angie Martinez. Yeah, Angie. Yeah. Angie. You know, all of those. I, I see those, but we got a lot in the south too. But at the end of the day, I, I, I mean, we all trying to do something to connect the dots uh, for this whole hip hop culture. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they do a good job when they um when they bring some of these their guests on, 
and they dig like from the like from what happens in the 80s and stuff like that and it gives you more access to what actually happened the influence and stuff like that because some of that like they some some uh, some of them artists they probably took that to the grave but now they have a platform to talk about why this beef happened and then how this got into it and then you be able to connect the dots of the influences that how your influence your influences got influenced so like I, I'd, I'd be on Instagram watching all of the snippets to make sure you know listen to the Fat Joe interviews or the um you know the Jay-Z interviews and stuff like that just to know because when you um when you when you tell people your influences they got influences so you mm-hmm. want to know that lineage yeah like it didn't just happen if you know hip hop is the we the we the <laughs> New York number one we the king of samples we yeah. sample yeah and if you sometimes you will sample a song that sampled the song, that sampled the song. So now, when you didn't know you sampled the song that sampled, that been sampled from three three lines down, three generations down, and when you start to look up that lineage after having to go through clearance and stuff, it it really opened your eyes. Wow. South Bronx. You from South Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bronx River is the South Bronx. Yeah, and Funk Flex from, from the Bronx, too. You know, like I said, y'all got a lot of, lot of different, uh, you know, uh, uh, hip hop heads from from yeah. over in, in, in where you from? That's, that's you know the and and, and the mecca of hip hop. Yeah, so it, yeah, it definitely is the mecca. Um, um, how do you like the southern sound? You in the south? So. Um, it's it's different. I mean, so we, we have you ever listened to anything from the south? You can't. I just came, the Migos or any of those people? Do yeah, you know them? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just asking because yeah, yeah, you from I, New York. You from yeah, up, yeah, uptown. A, you from Chicago a, and all that. It's a regional that. disconnect. Like it legit, y'all music will stop at a certain border of a state, and it won't make it to New York. Mm-hmm. Y'all famous artists, we don't know nothing. And exactly, and that's why I never. Now that's a good point, and the reason I I love talking about that because I know for a fact they don't they don't give us the credit or even the recognition, and we don't give them the credit or there is a there's a it's blockage. A, it's a roadblock. <laughs> it, it, yeah, like we don't even like that's why I play the game like I play the game too because I always be like, nah, man, you know, because they at one point they was calling uh, Migos mumble rap. It was niggas in New York, like, and I was like, nah, you can't really just gauge it on that because we from different hoods and at the end of the day we don't even talk the same but at the end of the day we 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 look the same but we talk different we from different background but we 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 are the same but different mm-hmm. you understand what yeah, i'm saying for sure. but but when you but when you gauge it on whose whose music is doing what you got to be respectful first of all because we all come from nothing even though it started in new york it's still, you know, being driven all over the place. And a lot of the time, the New York artists that were supported back then, um, I know I supported them. You know what I mean? It was only New York at first when you were old head. Yeah. You understand? It wasn't nothing else. Yeah. Now, I can go back there in my mind because I remember how it started. Yeah. But a lot of the youngsters can't. So they don't be understanding the history of it. Yeah. So I, when I when I text or or when I post yours, I'm gonna hit Funk Flex. He looks at my stuff sometimes. Or I'm gonna hit you know different people from your hood because I'm 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 researching and making sure I hit up a Angela Yee or a Charlemagne the God on my storyline just mm-hmm. to see if they'll see it because it's a respect thing for me. Like we gotta we on the same playing right. field, mm-hmm. yeah. so we gotta respect each other. And if we don't, then that tell me you're immature. Yeah. And I can hear it in your interview if you if you really want to be real. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I know you ain't really focused on what I'm focused on because I don't focus on what you focus on, and you could tell by our craft. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but definitely got a lot of love for them. I'm not not dissing for sure, but or not, you know, not coming down on them. That's how we see it down here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't say nothing like we don't talk the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. like, it, it's, it a, it a, it's a cultural disconnect, Um, but... When they really, if you really want to dive deep into the newer, the newer generation mu- uh, musicians, they go to the South to blow up. Okay, explain they, like, that. Um, they go to California to record, or they go to Atlanta to record, mm-hmm. and um, it's something about the, the Southern hospitality, the welcoming. Like I came down here, I'm on tour, and I got shown man an ex- extra amount of love. Meaning they're like, "Why you down here? This is your home." Yeah. So that's you know when like say if and I went back to the from hood, any other state. if I went back to the hood right now and I said y'all went down <laughs> to Dallas, Texas, and I met <laughs> well um e boss and stuff like that, and he showed me love, showed me around, took me out for drinks and stuff like that. They don't. They're gonna come down here. Really? Okay. They they will come down here. 
because it's a con- like the concrete jungle. That 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 phrase is real. I've heard. I, of that. I didn't have a. Mm-hmm. I didn't know black people could have a front yard or backyard or a house. I grew up in the projects, brick buildings. Mm-hmm. I didn't know like in that, the movies. Yeah, I didn't know that was possible. So like, y'all got a different living style. Y'all know what a front yard and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, why y'all so dangerous? Y'all Dude, have a cookout right there, bro. I was <laughs> tripping. I'd be like, how y'all so dangerous? Y'all have a cookout right in front, y'all front Dude, yard I, and sit on the porch. We had to go downstairs and sit in front of the building. Right there in a little park. Everybody. And never, I never seen such dedicated people to a block or to a. To, to, this is my spot right here. When I go to New York, these niggas standing right in the same spot, dude bragging. I've been here for forty years. I'm like, right here, nigga. <laughs> no, I'm being like, real. I know so. I know some people from the hood like that. They don't even never leave. Okay, they don't, don't want to leave. All right, so let me explain what the project says. Right, you got. You ever seen a college campus housing? Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Imagine that. But for public housing, a big car. No, we got them. A big, all right, a big 14 story sometimes. But I was don't go up, no, I was go out. Right. Yeah, it is. That's why, that's where it is, right? So that's where the disconnect with the reason is, right? Our buildings go up and out. Because y'all, y'all ain't got buildings go out. And I was like, y'all got two floors. We got 14 floors. Correct. And 30 buildings. Correct. Y'all got all a right? lot of people. Yeah, all right. So when you're in the projects, right? You see how y'all got to drive far to go to places? Mm-hmm. You can walk across the street. In my projects, you have the Chinese food store, the candy store, the laundromat, the mechanics, the pharmacy, a grocery store. Um, everything you need you to need. live in civilization is across the street. So it's built to keep you in and not travel far. So you able to walk out your building, walk there, come home with mom groceries. So that's what we, that's why when people get trapped, and they don't leave the block or the hood. That's why you walk across the street and you have everything you need across the street. And that's crazy. That's why you get trapped. We don't. To me, that's crazy. That's I could crazy. never live like that's that, why that bro. People, <laughs> no, because a lot of people will go there because I've known people who've came to Texas and um, try to see if they could live here, but because they don't have a car, you need a car to get anywhere you want to get to in Texas. Yeah, they told So <laughs> it's easier yeah. to live in New York or they can jump on a train, go here, go here, and get a job, work. They don't need to depend on nobody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get an apartment or, you know, room in with somebody. It's real easy. Here, you got to have some money to start up. Yeah, yeah. But do you do you feel like uh, being a... Um, Cab from New York. Could you ever live in Texas or in the South? Um, Be honest, because I could never live in. I couldn't do the New. I could do Chicago, maybe. I don't know. No, mm-hmm. I, I mean it's cool, but I could never live in these. I go. To, I've been to these places. Yeah. I frequent these places, but I could never leave Texas, bro. Is it like it's because I'm, I'm, he could I'm leave just, Texas for Atlanta, but not Atlanta for, dope yeah. to me. Uh, I, you I, been to Atlanta? I'm going for I'm I'm um, some um they sent me it's a picture on King of Diamonds, so it's beautiful. I would gotta go out there. It's then, beautiful. It is. I know everybody keeps saying I never went. Like I'm, I'm Alabama is beautiful. What I'm telling you is it's just I got room. I like to drive. You see, you pull up. I'm in the Escalade. I'm, I'm rolling, bro. I can't. <laughs> I can't be stuck on no block talking to nobody and going back to the store and get a piece of pizza and go back over here <laughs> and lounge with old boy and them. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. That's but that's how y'all do because I've been there. I've seen it. <laughs> but how hard was it to you, for you to adjust to Chicago when you had to leave New York? I mean, I'm in the suburbs of Chicago. I tell because of who I am. I'm really like... I'm on tour, like I got, I got, I got a nice car in Chicago. Okay, so you think, were, so. you're not into the bad areas yeah, of Chicago. Yeah, I'm no, my, my brother, my little brother has a store um, on 71st and Jeffrey. He, he owns Five Domino, so I open run the co- a company out there. So I'm in and out of Chicago. So I could tell you that it it's a it's like an energy, a dark cloud when you, cause I'm from New York. So once I step into the like, you go from the suburbs to Chicago, my whole demeanor change. My, I'd get tensed up, my hand on my hip, every, you know. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm looking over my shoulder. They be like, what up, big bro? I'm like, let's go. I'm looking around. The Chicago is, it make you feel that your life in danger every at all second. Time. Cause, well, well, my brother's little brother stores at, um, that's around where little people. Is it a clothing store? People. What kind of store? No, no Domino's. Domino's. Oh, Domino's. Do, do there be a lot of people hanging out in front? Yeah, it's that. It's, that's, it's, See what it's, yeah, that's how it was when we drove down there. With a lot of people. So yeah, it's hanging a lot out. of different people, meaning a lot of different gangs, and it's not your neighborhood. So that's that's the so difference. So that's the difference between New York and yeah, Chicago. Yeah, so in my, my projects, everybody in front of the you know the they corner store, there. that's us. We grew up together, football, blah, 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 had beef, whatever. That's us, family. 
and going to somebody plaza and it's many different people. That's what little, I ain't gonna lie over there, little Dirk brother, he got killed over there. So that area where my, my little brother stores at, I, I know some of the bad parts of Chicago. So we in and out, I keep him out of Chicago at night. Wow. Them things ring. Wow. Like that's, they ring. That's like, crazy. How is the music different from Chicago to New York? Um, it's, well, Dirk and his melodics, it kept, a, it bridged that gap. A bridge that gap because a boogie and Dirk and you know you know Fabio Fora King Vaughn and all of that stuff so it bridged that gap. Um, I don't know the internet started the New York versus Chicago beef. <laughs> the internet did that. Um, <laughs> some people never been to Chicago and got beef. I, I can't. Internet listen. does a lot of stuff the, with the beef. That's that. that's people have yeah, beef on the, internet the, and the not in person. Similarities in music it kept is it bridged that gap. So they like you know. They like our artists, you know, go in, do the collab. You know, you've seen the Fabio Foreign, you know, the little Dirks, A Boogie. Yeah, so that that right there is, you know, they like our sound, we like theirs. Um, they actually like my music too because it's similarities with the artists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Down South different. I won't okay, when out. you say Down South, what's the, who do you, like when you think of Down South artists, who do you think about? Um, Artist-wise? Yeah, like the banging artists, like damn, he go hard. Oh, I mean, I, I think of like, um, the baby Migos, little um, baby, no the baby, the baby, the baby. Okay, um, Migos, um, future. shout out the baby, yeah, yeah. So I, I think of them and you like their future, sound. um, yeah. I like. He's not like that though. I like his. I like some of his old stuff. You don't like his new stuff. I, I mean, I do. I think he got a song with um Money Bag Yo. I like it. You like Money Bag Yo? Yeah, Money Bag Yo <laughs> came to Chicago. So, yeah, and. His live performance, it's like he got the best rest the night before. He, uh, it's something about energy. Um, a, a artist performing with a live band, it makes it a different experience. So I was in a front row VIP because one of my tour DJs um, came up for a festival. So I was in there with the, with the rest of them. They had an artist, um, shout out to them out there in the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he came and he did his thing. And you felt, you felt it. And he brought out Yo Gotti. So, um... I never liked him before that, but something about him performing live was a different experience. Who, Yo Gotti? No. No. Oh, my man. Man. <laughs> something about him performing live it was a different experience, so that I started energy. looking at him more. Yeah. What so a, that's, that's, that's how that's. What about me. West Coast? Who do, you, who do you look at up on the West Coast? Oh, man. I'm, I'm going to lie to you. Um, just, that is a disconnect. You don't even rock with the West Coast at all. Nah, they said. I mean, like I, who? Who do you? Nobody. I mean, like when Nipsey died, I looked at him and I started. Yeah. Um, you know, focusing. What did you like, think about it? Um, Be real. His music. Nipsey music. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's inspirational. It's to help you get off that block that that um yeah. that push you, make you prosper type of music. Um, I like that, and it's like, but they production is you know they is West Coast, so it was it's its own unique regional sound. So it's like. You know, it's not like New York, Chicago, where, you know, a producer can send it to New York and the New York artist say, I'll, I'll get on that. And you know, it's, they get inspired off of hearing it. See, you can hear West, West Coast beat in New York. You know, like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's yeah. how it is. Like, it's, it's different. You do, do you like, do you mess with Kanye West? Um, the old Kanye, not the new Kanye. The new. <laughs> I like through the wire and stuff like that. That but Kanye, no. I grew up on him. But the new, new, new Kanye, you not right. Oh, the I billionaire got, Kanye. Nah, I got, I got to listen to the music. Um, you know, that's just for that. You know, that's what it came down to. Who just, do you inspire to do a collaboration with? Oh, Rod Wave, a boogie, like my people. You talk about them a lot because they. I when I formed my label and my team, I studied hybrids the label from the bottom up, meaning that it was it's for them. You got QP, Bubba, Don Q, A Boogie, for them, took the music industry by storm. We we went, we from the same high school, so it's more reality based. It's not like I gotta look up a superstar. No, I know from where we came from, what we all went through, fighting on the second floor, mm -hmm. getting into it, the Hispanics and all of that, all coming together to fight them together on the app, protecting each other, and watching them be able to do it, like, and knowing somebody who did it, and they did it to the point where you got major record labels pushing to get them a part as a um, you know partnership. That right there, you know, have, having something you know set your goals realistic. That right there was realistic. So have you ever rich out to boogie? Um, not yet. You gotta reach he, out. Nah, he he. I ain't gonna lie. He had a certain level. I reached out to the CEOs and stuff like that. I invited him to my concert. I got a concert September 12th at DJ Drewski. 
um, you know, and Cuban links and them from Wu Tang Clan in New York. Um, Queens. They didn't, so he I, ain't, he ain't, he ain't I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm I'm send the um, invite again. But I yeah, them it's hard. It, 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 I mean, that's something to think about. Like trying to reach out to people and that I don't know, man. Uh, they get on this certain hyenas and. I think they, like I said, it's a disconnect also when you get on a certain level with the monetarily, uh, 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 you know, you know, having good, having certain millionaires talk to millionaires. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. Billionaires talk to billionaires. I'm being real. No, for real. And for thousandaires real. talk to thousandaires. It's, that is true, but you got to think about this. How many I mean, he, people? He reached out back to like he. I ain't gonna lie. He showed love to his hood. But how many people are probably in his inbox inviting him places a thousand, and doing a, a million? Right. So, so he don't a lot have of time. Times, he don't. I don't think he control social media. It's not even that you don't have <laughs> like, time. Like at that level, you don't control it's your just social that media. You can't. You yeah. can't. You know, if you do it to one, you gonna have to keep going with everybody. You don't have. Uh, you don't. You can't. Like I. I that, that's a lie. I mean, if you want it to be... Let me be. tell you why it's a lie. Because when <laughs> I post things, like I told you before, uh, Zay Tobin reached back out. Money Man hit me back. You can't tell me. And they got people and they got the same thing. But they still... Nah, yeah, you come you on, stop playing. You like, but I'm going to give, give credit them. where credit's due. Yeah. But uh, if you KLC, invite... when I talked to KLC the other night, he picked up the phone, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? And he's no, but you met KLC. It don't before, matter. But he, if you hadn't met him if before, I hadn't met him. I didn't meet Zaytoven. Say that. Okay, but with Zaytoven, okay. But he's talking about inviting him somewhere to his no show matter, and stuff like that. No matter. Even a response that. would be, you would be like, "That's dope." Be at least he said, uh, "Yeah, man, I see. I, I can't rock with it, but man, keep doing your thing." What, how much would that do? Nah, it'll, it'll boost my. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, yeah, you can't yeah, even yeah. get this I, from these people. I'm one of these realist can. dudes. Okay, I know already that that that. that I, that's why I love Pimp C. I go right back to him. When you didn't do something and you knew already, you do you do little shiesty stuff or you act like you didn't have no way to get to people, he exposed that. And I think that's the way you got to do it. You got to be like, yeah, I reach out to the nigga, but they too busy, so whatever. You know, and it make you go harder if you like me. I do. <laughs> I, mean, I, I get motivated off of that. Yeah, like, like, oh, I the nigga don't want to recognize me. I be like, yo, we going to cross paths very soon. Yeah. So I'm very optimistic. So I'm like... This this whole industry, everybody's interconnected because everybody had the same resource. They all hang together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all act like girls, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to diss you, but as soon as they meet, they just start acting like they love each other because they not in the, in the little cliques together. Not all. I'm girls talking about the niggas that. with certain monetarily yeah, yeah. Uh, levels. They like it's like one meet one just because he's seen one with the other. All oh, they accept each other. I think that's kind of corny. So I want to know. I'm, I'm where tripping. Did the name, Am I tripping? I'm like, oh what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they like. I ain't they, gonna they, lie. They, 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 it's, a, it's a gatekeeper. It's a, it's a list out there somewhere where they just act like we on with these people with us. I'm being real. <laughs> I mean, like, I feel like the, um, like when you when you go to some of these festivals and you see some of these artists, that's when like some of the relationships start to be built. Like if you end up doing like Summer Jam or South by Southwest together, like on it, like that's where like some of these they all meet. You know, so they like my mentors told me, you want to be at every one of them things. You want to mm -hmm. be on the strip at South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. You gonna run into who you need to run into. Like you want to make sure you doing shows where they doing shows at, cause like like it's like that's you're not gonna get through through social media unless you go viral, and viral ain't gonna lie by by chance. Like like you you really really sometimes can't push going viral. But then when you go viral, when you deal with these different things. And then here they come and make you feel like I'm, no, I'm too real, bro. Yeah, that 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 right there. I already told <laughs> I don't myself. Even I said, play, man. I'm, I'm gonna play the game, but I'm like, yo, I, you know I, already these I people didn't even want to even want to rock with you for real. So yeah. why would you? I'm just I'm good over here. Yeah. I'm, I'm being real, bro. Like I don't, I, I you know, you meet the good ones and the ones who really, I mean, the fake fall back. You know, like I, I want you to be real with me, or else I don't. If you want me, I want you, nigga. But I don't want you if you don't want me. Yeah, <laughs> but some, I ain't gonna lie, like, sometimes you gotta open their eyes. Open like, how? Because, I don't know, like, you just gotta, people will see dedication and um, that push, that endurance, like, like a lot of these, like, right now, you know, when A Boogie came up or whatever, he probably went through the same shit I'm going through. So, he probably think everybody him up looking for a handout. That's how it kind of is, you know, everybody, he, he done said it, he said, yo, how you gonna try to sign hybrids the label? And you sound like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's like so, it's them situations where they either think you look, if they got it out the mud, they got it hard, they put talk. money in, 
they sold a car to get to a concert or whatever mm -hmm. and then you just come in and just want the whole connect and be plugged in it's kind of it's kind of fake but disrespect. it's fake and, you know, when if, if 50 call you today and you and him were hanging out, them niggas all, yo, oh, yo, what's up? It's fake, bro. It's fake, <laughs> yeah, bro. I know, I know. I, it, it, yeah, sometimes it's, it's fake. the name of the game, though. <laughs> Soon as one of the niggas I let you that's known and then now everybody embrace you, nigga. Oh, they respect that nigga, but they really don't even know you. Yeah. And that's how niggas be getting in trouble, too, because you, you say the wrong thing to a real one and... Uh, yeah, you gonna check that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's like I don't know. I, I I I feel bad for for people who trying to get it that way. Like it's hard, but you gotta get your. I think the most important. Let me get back on the positive. So I think. I, let oh, me let ahead. me just say you need to focus on the people who support you. Yeah. Let's get real for a second. Yeah. Like Damn I, I, all that other stuff. I told, I told the people like, who I follow you. I don't care if you got two Instagram followers. Just be like me and you guys. Because they linked up, they followed you, they rock with you. And if it's two or if it's two million, treat those people like gold because those are the ones that are with you when you're who you are right now. Yeah, for sure. I'm that's just like, being real. Now that's, that, was, that was a lesson I learned early on in the industry. Like, my core team, my label, my, my execs, my label producer, my DJs, my everything, I always bring them up. Any any place I talk about, you know, like somebody asked me the other day, if you was able to work with on any producer in the industry, who would it be? I said, my label producer. Oh, I put really? Him, I put him on a table right next to Mustard, Zaytoven, and he'd kill it. You're going to go Because if you, if, you, if you listen, if my song is already on the radio moving and y'all fuck with the beat, I co-produced that with my label producer. So I would put them in the same room as the rest of these people. So, like, I, I tell them that. I tell them straight up like that. Like, I, I, my, I trust my team. Do you rock with Gucci? That <laughs> different type of music style, but, you know. I just like to ask these crazy questions. Yeah, like, it's like I'm going to lie to you. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a different sound. They, you know, rap about, you know, th that lifestyle. Like so, it's a, it's, a, it's a whole different style. If they put that on like a melodic beat or something. Like some of them, like a lot of these down south artists are trying to transition over into becoming melodic, meaning harmonizing and, and all of that. You know, the rod wave type of beat. You know, it's tough stuff like that because they see that's where people are grasping and gravitating to uh, on a consistent basis. Um, it been a change in the in the, in, the, in the hemisphere in regards to the music. It's going to the melodics and stuff. You don't legit have to be hardcore bar for bar and stuff anymore. And like a lot of they but that's why y'all started hardcore bar yeah. for bar. And that's Bronx. why and that's why I told you the disconnect with the newer generation. Brooklyn, all that is the newer generation type of music and the old heads or that sissy they call it the sissy shit. So that's why it's that gap. Because they don't like the way it's going. Wow. But the people like it. So is they going to either get with it? That's why some of them are really falling back. The old heads falling back in the background because they like, I just can't. Wow. Like some look, of the, some look, of the, the, you knew head, um, the older heads, you know, some of them in the mid generation, they be like, they like, yo, I, I just got to adapt. Like, I have to. You see Khaled's, you see um, Fat Joe's, French Montana's, um, Jim Jones and stuff like that. Like, you know, um, they 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 accept it and you know adjust to it, but you understand like T Pain, he been melodic, so he didn't have to adjust. It just died off for a little bit, but it came back and resurfaced. So now he's like, oh shit, look at look what I birthed, you know? Yeah. So, so that's that's like though like he been in that. Do you uh do you really uh top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Top three artists of all time. Number one. Um, one of my songs was Vince top three artists of all time. I got I got Tupac. Um, because, Tupac number one. Um, yeah. One of my. That's my, what's I up. forgive you now. Is um, if you listen to, um, the message and I forgive you now, you listen to the Why message Tupac? and dear, dear mama, his dear mama song. You love that song. That's what inspired me to write. Um, I forgive you now about my mom. So if you listen to the both two, you be like, oh shit. It's not it's not copying his words or his cadence or anything, but it's saying oh, it's okay to talk about a situation like this. Wow. So that's Tupac. Number um, two. Um I got um fifty cent. Um That's your boy. Fifty cent, um what you gonna call it? Um one of his his song Best Friend. Like he was doing he was in melodics too. Fifty Cent was in melodics. Um, you know him, Little How to Love, Little Wayne. So it was um 
And then yeah. that's like my own. Number three. Yeah, that's like my old, you know, the, the foundational people. Number three is, yeah. is Lil, Lil Wayne? Lil Wayne. I grew oh, up yeah? on Lil Wayne. How to Love. If you listen to How to Love, that's I like my, this song. Uh, he got melodic, even though he was. You just know, love melodic. Uh, <laughs> R&B, though. He like, so about it. I found a this way in the pocket. This is top three for any genre as well. Yeah. So you don't have to just do rap. You can do any, I any mean, genre. I mean, it's too late. I got my three. <laughs> yes. Check it, man. So, but what I wanted to know, um, what category of the rap industry do you think you cater to, like your style? So it's melodic hip hop. So it's like a subgenre of hip hop. Um, and is that where you want to stay with your music? Yeah, I like that. I like to. I like to do the um, melodic chorus with the rap verses. I don't. I don't like to have the same cadence, same cadence through the whole song. I'm a creative individual, so. That, I feel like that's just gonna put me in a box, you know. If you just rap that whole cadence, you know, do the whole thing. Like if you know back then, um, some of these songs, you know, you got the um, what's love, um, the Tamias when they when they mm -hmm. did the collab with the hip hop artists because they didn't sing. It was always a um, a melodic hook and a rap verse, you know. So that's this that's that's where I'm going to keep it because it's okay. it was already there. It was already a thing. But now it's just one artist doing the melodic hook and the rap verse. Back so then it was a female artist. Where did the name um, Young Anomaly come from? All right. So I'm a brother group. I grew social fellowship. So shout out to them. Um, I pledged Bangu Chapter in Buffalo State. Um, my dean and pledges when I went over, um, I went, you know, I pushed through everything and I was named Anomaly. Anomaly means rare and special occasion. So, um, who I gave just, you that name? My my Dina pledges. Oh, um, so he gave it. The DP okay. DP Deadpool August Edwards from um already. Yeah, so that that name, you know, they already saw something in me, so I just kept that that fire and I just put Young in front of it, um, just you know for the rap. Yeah, for the rap type because I'm I'm gonna be rare and special in the industry, so I just kept that energy. So I've been sticking to you know my foundational how, character. How, how um how can people get a hold of you? Um, you can catch me. I'm. All platforms, Young Anomaly, um, Y U N G A N O M A, the number one Y. Um, I got a shout out to Google. I got my Google Knowledge Panel. Shout out to Pandora. They bless me my own radio station. Um, my song right now is moving. Hard to fall asleep is moving across the nation. They pushing it. Um, so shout out to the curators at um, Pandora and Spotify. Thank you for them too for playlisting my song. Wow. So is, I'm, I'm about to shut it down, but I want to ask you something. One of my friends here locally says that he came up with this deal, uh, shout out to LD300, where he sells his music, tangible item, hard drives. He don't put it on, on social media. He sell it to his people, the people he give his product to, because he said that a million uh, streams equaled $4,000. Yeah, um, that's on uh, a Spotify platform, so it differs. Um, so that really, that really, 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 that that hones into your, the marketing strategy. So you got to know your ins and out of your streaming platforms. You got to know, um, you got to have a digital and a physical presence. So you like that's all like my specialty in regards to my degree. That's something like that I know. Like I would, I would never disappear from the digital because that's the era I grew up in. But you, you know. But did you hear what he, what I just said? Yeah, Why? Yeah. He, yeah, he said so. he makes his money, he can count, touch his money, yeah. get his money through giving it to his supporters. Mm -hmm. He still have a, a, a Instagram. He still have a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a social me media presence. Uh, presence. But he does choose to do it that way to control the narrative that way. Yeah, what do you think about that? It's, just, it's limiting. We it's, live, it's limiting. We are living in a digital era. So you gotta keep you gotta keep that hustle that that boost to the ground, but that's limiting you because your song's not gonna get overseas. You're not gonna be able to send your song overseas. Why can't you do both? You could do it, but guess the overhead cost. The overhead cost of producing a city CD and sending it out or having to go there and do that. The that's hard drive. So I mean, gotta, the flash you gotta, drive. You gotta be able to double down. Like yeah, I love that hustle, that boost to the ground, but that that's a limited mindset. You got to find somebody that can help you on the digital while you do the physical. But you cannot leave out the digital because your song could go overseas. But when you put something on digital, a lot of times they, they pirate it, they steal it. They don't even, you don't make money off of certain instances. Um, so if you feel like, right, yo, if you only want to do the physical, right, and you're scared of the digital and you're making your, most of your money off the physical and you're scared somebody's going to it, steal it on the digital and you're not going to make more money, think of it as an exposure opportunity. Okay. Because you double down on the marketing. 
Thank you so much, Anomaly. A uh, young anomaly came through here, man, straight out of really born and raised New York, moved to Chicago, man, killing the waves, man, got dope music. Uh, man, we appreciate you for coming. We love you, brother. Appreciate we appreciate it. you for coming on our platform. Definitely. On definitely. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Check it, man. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we have. Boss Talk 101.